All right, we all basically wanted OnePlus to come back to an affordable price point, and we finally got it. So is it all it was hyped up to be? Well, let's find out, because it's Joshua Vergara. What's going on, everybody? And these are my top five complaints and takeaways with the OnePlus Nord. Sponsored by NordPass. See the link in the description to check out a password manager in which security meets simplicity. All right, as usual, we start off on the outside looking in. And I have to admit that this is a little bit nitpicky, so yeah, go ahead and get ready in the comments. Honestly, I'm just not a big fan of this color. I know that OnePlus is really focusing on this shade of blue for their latest lineup of products. It's not that glossy is bad because the Onyx gray edition of the phone actually looks pretty great. But when it comes to this like teal-like blue, it's just not my jam. There is also talk that the design is not full metal, bringing into question the build quality of the Nord. Now, I totally get where people are coming from with this, but a plastic build doesn't necessarily mean that it's cheaper in terms of build quality. And also, the thing is, the phone is literally cheaper. <laughs> the phone hasn't given me the impression that it is low quality. However, I do understand the head scratching going on regarding the metallic sheen that OnePlus put on the otherwise plastic frame. That's where I'm kind of coming from with the color complaint. Maybe it would have been better to just lean into the material and the color rather than try to make it all shiny because gloss and shine don't automatically equal luxury. So if the materials aren't quite as high-end as you might expect, remember that much of the rest of the phone actually kind of is. Moreover, OnePlus have made a one-size-fits-all kind of device where most people will find it pretty easy to work with on the daily. They've prioritized what I have been saying a lot in 2020 smartphone reviews, quality of life aspects. A flat display means that there won't be any wayward screen touches, and keeping a curve on the back lets the phone rest easy in your grip. The phone's footprint is also sizable to enjoy, but not so big that putting a case on it makes it very unwieldy. If anything, OnePlus encourages users to dive into their protective accessorizing by providing many good-looking first-party cases. And this shell made for comfortable everyday use actually houses some great features that most phones at this price bracket simply do not. So it's great that OnePlus prioritized many of the right things underneath the surface. This screen, full HD sure, but 90Hz refresh rate. Refresh rates are all the rage in screens across pretty much any tech category these days, and OnePlus gets credit for really pushing it over the last couple of years. And for people just looking for a good everyday experience, that perception of speed and smoothness is what is paramount. It totally doesn't hurt that the AMOLED panel is still vibrant, has an in-display fingerprint reader, and has the screen tuning that Oxygen OS typically provides, with features like a monochromatic reading mode. Ultimately, it's just a really good and fun screen experience that I've definitely taken advantage of in multiple ways. And that would be due to the Snapdragon 765G, which is what we once thought would be a much lesser version of the 865, but then it turned out to be a great and reliable processor all on its own. The OnePlus Nord is still one of the few current devices that is sporting the 765G, and it is further proof that this processor is more than enough for most users. Which is really the point of this takeaway, because I do think that 2020 has marked a really great point in smartphone specs. OEM features and chip maker evolutions have made it so that we're getting good phones in pretty much every price bracket. And OnePlus is doing well to provide as much of their pedigree at sub-500 as possible, making the package look even better. Sure, there might be some missteps along the way, but because of how far we're coming in smartphones, the core experience is as good as it should be. And honestly, half the reason for this is because of Oxygen OS. OnePlus has worked really hard to make a version of Android that has a ton of fans, and for good reason. This might be the easiest on-the-eyes UI that gets enhanced by the high refresh rate screen. Seriously, Oxygen OS manages to have the right bevy of features like customization and dual apps and even the shelf. Which, by the way, I discovered that even if Google Now is now what you get on the left side, you can still have the shelf by swiping down on the home screen. And then simple things like having app folders show the icons on the lower half of the screen just make handling a breeze. If you've ever been overwhelmed by the sheer amount of things that other Android interfaces throw at you, or maybe you've been underwhelmed by some of their design cues, well, Oxygen OS is definitely something you should pay attention to. It just gets a lot of things right. And you know what? One thing I've added to my Oxygen OS experience is a password manager. Internet security is more important than ever, but we're also expected to remember so many passwords for so many services. Thankfully, that can be a thing of the past with our sponsor, NordPass. Powered by the same cybersecurity professionals that make NordVPN, NordPass stores all of your passwords and other sensitive data in one place, fully encrypted on your device before it reaches their servers for sync. It can also generate highly complex passwords that are safer to use. You just have to put in your master password or use the biometrics like the in-display fingerprint reader, and then they're all available for easy autofill in any browser and as a replacement to the phone's built-in password manager. 
For even more security, two-factor authentication can put your NordPass vault behind yet another layer of security. Make security simpler with a powerful password vault on virtually any device by checking the link below, nordpass.com slash Joshua Vergara, where you can try NordPass for free. Thanks again to NordPass for sponsoring this video. All right, it's easy to get lost in the takeaways because what makes this phone so appealing is its commitment to good everyday performance and experience. But there are some aspects to this phone that are missing, which can be kind of excused when given the lower price, but they do have to be addressed. Losing wireless charging is a bit of a bummer for me, mainly because I've grown accustomed to it with the flagships we've seen in 2020. Thankfully, OnePlus didn't skimp on wire charging as they ensure Warp Charge 30T is here. And other missing features are like expandable storage, which is usually par for the OnePlus course actually, and then the lack of a headphone jack, which I only mention because despite this phone being a bit more mid-range, it's clear that OnePlus are very much committing to the choice they made to remove it completely. Of course, this is probably the case because the company is pushing their OnePlus Buds, of which I did a review on that you can check out in links above and below. Now there is one place that OnePlus tried a little too hard to provide features, the cameras. Mind you, I'm not talking about the main sensors and the ultrawides, especially for the front-facing camera. I have to give OnePlus a ton of credit for even thinking about putting an ultrawide, and then it can do 4K video recording. This is one of those nice-to-have features that is actually somewhat surprising to see in a mid-range phone, but we so rarely get it in flagship devices that are almost twice the price of the OnePlus Nord. As much as I love it, I decided not to give it its own takeaway though, because you know what's enough to warrant its own complaint? The other sensors. Depth sensing is one thing, because it's included in virtually any phone worth its salt. The problem is that the depth sensor might not actually add to what you can already achieve using the main sensor and some software magic anyway. The results in portrait mode pictures kind of confirm this, as cutouts have never been perfect no matter what phone you use anyway. And more to the point, it's not like there's a depth sensor on the front camera, so if you're already happy with the portraits you're getting when there's no extra hardware backup, then why bother doing so on the rear? Okay, and then there's the macro camera whose existence isn't the issue here. If anything, macro photography can be its own fun and creative endeavor, uh, but so few macro sensors have actually tried to support that. Oddly enough, OnePlus already showed some ingenuity with the OnePlus 8 Pro, making the high-resolution ultra-wide-angle camera double as a way to get close macro shots. But add 2 megapixels for this dedicated macro on the Nord, it's just not worth putting there so that this phone can boast that it has a bunch of lenses. Which is a shame, because if the phone just had the main and the ultra-wide on both sides, I wouldn't have any complaints regarding the camera because those sensors work quite well, especially considering the price this phone comes in at. But maybe that's the problem with how OnePlus has positioned themselves over the last number of years. The company has strived and proved that they can stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with the best of them. But what happens when OnePlus decides to go back to its roots and bring an affordable option back to their catalog? Well, in all honesty, I think the expectations of the last few years seem to have bled in a little too much. The people's expectations are just high all the time, let's be fair. But when it comes to OnePlus, people are exceptionally eagle-eyed and nitpicky. You see, OnePlus seems to understand this themselves, as the New Beginnings documentary shows how much pressure they put on their own brand and identity to get this one right. Now, don't get me wrong, I think for the most part they've achieved a lot with the OnePlus Nord, but wow, that's a lot of pressure to put on yourselves. And even I feel that way a little bit as one of the only people that was actually there for the release of the OnePlus One. The Nord doesn't really fail in that context, but I guess what we can say is that it doesn't amaze the way that we probably hoped. Throw on top of this the fact that OnePlus is currently only releasing this phone in particular markets, namely India, as they have made very clear it is a market that is incredibly important to them. It's kind of a problem for users who are really excited to partake in the new beginnings of the OnePlus Nord, but they can't because their region is just not included. Well, guess what? You wanted the OnePlus of old? Here it is, with the level of exclusivity to match. To be fair, there's plenty of speculation that a type of Nord device will still find its way to American shores, so I will say this. I'll admit I'm fortunate to check out this phone right now because it gives me a glimpse into what can be as the Nord moves in more directions. So taken as a sum of its parts, the OnePlus Nord gets a lot of stuff right, but it also opens up a number of implications that we have to explore because this phone exists. At under 400 euros, it's a great bargain. And in India, there's an even more affordable version of the phone that is available for less money and significantly undercuts what is OnePlus's obvious target, the iPhone SE. 
You see, mid-range phones in markets like India are nothing new, but when Apple made an affordable yet competitive smartphone, 2020's smartphone landscape suddenly looked really different. So OnePlus got to work, making a phone that would bring a lot of what Android can offer and plenty of what OnePlus has achieved, providing a compelling option in contrast to Apple. With phones like the iPhone SE, the OnePlus Nord, the Pixel 4a, and the LG Velvet, we are seeing a successful race toward the middle, made possible by the advancements of smartphone specs in general. And in the end, the winners are most of the general public. Well, as long as you're in a region where they are all available. Ooh, clearly the OnePlus Nord made me think about a lot of stuff, but it's great to see OnePlus come back to an affordable price point and still provide a lot of what makes them so great. Mainly things like a good display, Oxygen OS, and honestly, there are some good things to say about the camera, it's just that some of the extras really don't feel like they need to be there. The OnePlus Nord attempts to fulfill a desire that we've all had for quite a few years now, and whether or not it actually succeeds in that endeavor is up to you. Let me know what you think about the OnePlus Nord in the comments. Are you in a region where this is a available, let me know what your experience has been like. And in general, just tell me if you have any complaints or takeaways of your own. From there though, I'm going to go ahead and call it on this one. Thank you so much for watching. Please take care of yourselves and each other and enjoy your tea, everybody.